Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. All right, James chapter 2, beginning right at verse 1. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, hey, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, uh -uh, no, 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 you stand over there, or here, sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Now, we're going to walk through this verse, and we're going to get to the partiality segment here in just a minute, but there's a golden nugget in this first verse that we just can't pass up. If you read that first verse in the New King James Version, it says, My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, The Lord of glory with partiality. So this can also be phrased because it's insinuated that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of glory. James used very, very strong words to identify Jesus Christ as the Lord of glory. He just didn't throw that out in passing because this is a striking term for Christ because here's what the Lord of glory means in the Greek language. It means the full manifestation of God's divine presence and majesty. Did you follow me? The Jews have a word for that. Many of you probably know this word. The word is Shekinah. How many of you know and heard the word Shekinah? It's Shekinah. You've heard ministries called Shekinah Ministries, or there was a, a worship group called Shekinah Glory Ministries. So the Jews called this glory of the Lord Shekinah. The definition of Shekinah is the visible sign of God's presence on the ark of the testimony in the Holy of Holies. In other words, if you're familiar with the Ark of the Covenant, and you're familiar with the, the temple, you went in and you had to go into a gate called Praise, and then you went into the court, the outer court, where anybody was permitted to go, and then you proceeded through the court, and then eventually you went into the holy place. But then after the holy place, you went into the holy of holies where the shekinah glory dwelt that was in the old testament so they call that the holy of holies a high priest was only permitted to go in there one time a year during the feast of tabernacles on the day of atonement but how many of you know there was a big veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies but when jesus stretched out his arms and said to tell us die the bible says that that veil was rent in two it was ripped in two which now come on somebody gives us full access that we can now boldly go before the throne of god why because we've been washed by the blood of the lamb oh i don't know that's good news somebody in the house So we're talking about the Shekinah glory of the Lord, the visible sign of God's presence. While this term, the word Shekinah, is not used in your Bible anywhere, it was used by the Jews and then first century Christians adopted it as well as Shekinah being understood that it was the visible sign of God's holy presence. The term Shekinah, however, is taken from the Old Testament term. Some of you are familiar. The word is kabod. Kabod simply means a cloud or the weightiness, the heaviness of God. This is also known as the glory of the Lord. You're familiar with the story in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. The Bible says the priests were all to gathered together and they consecrated themselves. And it says they came out from the, uh, the, the, the holy place and they came out and they began to worship God. It says they, they got together regardless of their division. In other words, there was no racism there. It didn't matter if you were Baptist, Pentecostal, or Baptocostal. Come on, somebody. 
But they set aside their little divisions, and the Bible says that they came out, and as they sang with one voice with 120 trumpeters blowing their trumpets, it says, the glory of the Lord, the cloud descended in the holy place. It was the kabod, it was the glory of the Lord known as Jesus Christ because James referred to him as the Lord of glory. James referred to him as Shekinah in Exodus chapter 19 verse 9. We know that God goes up to the Mount Sinai. The Bible says that a cloud, the kabod, the Shekinah fell in disgust and had conversation with Moses. Listen my friend, this is Jesus the Lord of glory having a conversation. Come on, are y'all following me here? It's Jesus talking with Moses in Exodus throughout the, the book while the Jews are being led out of Egypt. The Bible says they were led by a cloud by day and a fire. Come on, who is the cloud? The Lord of glory. It was Jesus Christ. In uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 9, we see that Jesus is born, but an angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds out in a field. The Bible says, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. In other words, Jesus, the Lord of glory, was speaking to the shepherds and saying, hey, listen, I became in the flesh. Come on, y'all. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You read down through it, it says the flesh, or I'm sorry, the, the Word became flesh, and, all right, let me, let me break that down a little. The Word became flesh in the original Hebrew translation. Obviously, the Greek is in New Testament, but in the Hebrew, the way they look at that is God. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. It means he tabernacled. What that means is when they used to build tents in the early ancient days, they would take animal skins. Are you following me? And they would stretch them across sticks. Jesus Christ came and put flesh. He put a tent on. Oh, come on, somebody. He put a tent on and dwelt amongst us. He tabernacled along with his people. Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. In the book of Romans, it speaks about the glory of the Lord being the Jews' inheritance. Listen, that glory has a name. It's J-E-S-U-S, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm not done yet. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Come on, most of you will remember this. Remember this. Jesus is risen from the grave. He's talking to his disciples. You remember the story? He's given them their final instructions before he's going to ascend. The Bible says when he ascended, the Bible said it was like a cloud. We're talking about the Shekinah. We're talking about the Kabod. The presence of the Lord took Jesus out. And, they, and the angel said, hey, you see Jesus? The same way he left, the same way he's going to return. We read about it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, which states that then in Christ will rise first, but we who are alive and remain at the coming of the Lord, we shall be caught up in the air, we're going to meet Jesus on a what? Cloud. On a cloud. We're going to meet him in the manifest presence of God. We're going to meet him in the glory of the Lord, the Kabod, the Shekinah. Come on, somebody in the house, give our God a praise. Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yerusha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. Now, you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button subscribing to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And last but not least, share this message with all your friends and family. Well, God bless you and Maranatha. Jesus Christ is coming soon.
Thank you.